Hello, I'm Archibald Chesterfield III and welcome to the program Fuckers, Hello Fuckers. And today I just want to talk about what do certain watches say to other watch aficionados. And uh, I'd like to call on my experience as a watch lover and watch connoisseur. And uh, I'd just like to, um, to make a few comments. And uh, this, this relates to what do other watch enthusiasts think of your watch of choice. And i got to tell you, when, uh, when I see a watch enthusiast with a Rolex, it's a very neutral feeling. Unless it's something special, like a solid gold sub, it really doesn't enthuse most watch enthusiasts. Rolex is sort of the, the good benchmark. And I love the brand. I really love the brand, but it doesn't it doesn't really make a huge statement. I call it the Rolex ground neutral effect. It's basically what you'd expect somebody to have. Now, on the other side of the coin, if somebody has a Jaeger Le Coultre, it immediately says they're a enthusiast in the know. And I was talking to a good friend of mine from England, and uh, he recently sold an expensive wristwatch. And Tom Bolt, the ro- the uh, horological legend, came out to check out the watch he was selling. Tom Bolt saw that this gentleman had a uh, Jaeger Le Coultre reverso on his wrist, and Tom Bolt just knew this guy knows watches. He's a true enthusiast. And uh, the sale went through successfully. And that's the whole thing. A Reverso or any Jaeger Le Coultre really sets you apart as an enthusiast in the know. The same could be said for brands like Breguet. Um, Patek Philippe's a bit different. Patek is, you know, that's, that's, that's a very in the know brand. It used to be an enthusiast. Uh, a rich enthusiast watch. It's now moving into uh, dangerous territory as the popularity of the brand rises. The other end of the scale is pity. Pity and loathing. And uh, many years ago, I remember one of the project engineers on a project I was on bought for himself a Tag Heuer Carrera. And uh, after I stopped saying to myself, what the fuck did he buy that for? I just felt fuck. How? Why would? Why would you do that? I just felt pity for this poor fucker. He'd bought a Tag Heuer Carrera, and I mean, it wasn't even a nice retro vintage one. It was one of these modern. It was just fucking. I, I just hated it. I just absolutely fucking hated it, and it pegged him as a watch enthusiast who doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. Somebody who's an amateur. It it signified him as an amateur. I also recently met up with a guy I used to work with, Paul Maxwell. Hello, Paul! And uh, he bought a Omega Seamaster Aquaterra GMT chronograph. And he told me why he didn't get the Rolex GMT. The only thing I could, I mean, I didn't say anything to Paul at the time, but I'll tell you the truth now. It's just the audience and myself here. What a fucking stupid move. Why the fuck would anyone buy an Omega over a Rolex? I mean, that's just fucking dog shit. I mean, I love Omega, but it's not in the same league. It's not in the same league as a fucking Rolex. And, um... Although it's a great piece and, you know, I, I just think he's fucking nuts. Again, these people who buy these Omegas, they constantly tell you why they didn't buy a Rolex. Well, if Rolex is so inferior to your Omega, why the fuck do you keep mentioning Rolex? And that's an interesting thing. You know, a lot of these fuckers out there, they keep comparing everything, you know... Oh, this is better than a Rolex. Well, why do you keep fucking mentioning Rolex? It's like comparing a car to a Mercedes constantly. It's because it's the fucking benchmark. It's the benchmark and everyone fucking knows it. 
And uh, that's 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 my opinion on the matter there. So, fuckers, I'd like to hear what you think. I'm Archibald Chesterfield the third. Tell me what you fuckers think of that.